Hey guys, Dave Atkinson here, and on this video lesson I'm going to talk about a 4 over 7 or a 4 against 7 polyrhythm. Now this polyrhythm is a little bit different. It's a 4 over 7, but the actual pattern could also be notated or, or viewed as a 2 over 7, and I'll get to that in a little bit here. But um, first off, check out the chart. Like I said, this is not notated the same way as most of our music here on drumlessons.com. This one is done in a little bit of a, of a chart form, okay? So as you can see, this is notated in a chart that has two lines on it. The top line is a four pattern, or a two pattern, and the bottom line is a seven pattern. Now, with polyrhythms, you want to make sure you play them long enough so they actually repeat, or they actually come back together and line up again. And with a seven and a four, the lowest common denominator for that is 28 counts, or in a 4-4 four, four bar, that's seven bars. That's a long time for a pattern to repeat, and a lot of times when a listener is, is listening to the, the polyrhythm, they can't really hear the polyrhythm at all because it takes so long for the pattern to repeat. And it's kind of confusing and it just most of the time doesn't really sound right. So that's why I've kind of explained this one and notated in a 7 over 2 pattern. And I'll explain that again in even more detail in a bit. Stay with me here. Alright, now for the 4 pattern, I'm going to play that for you with my right hand on my leg here just so you can get the feel of it. And you're going to notice that there's two X's instead of one before it repeats. So every 4 counts you're going to play two notes. This is also why I call it a 7 over 2. Again, I'll explain that in a bit. Here we go. Here's the fork pattern on my right hand on my leg. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Just like that. Almost like playing eight notes. Okay? Now let's look at the other pattern, the seven pattern. You're gonna notice this has five X's for every seven counts or for every seven boxes. It actually counts out like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now you're going to notice that when I say sev, that's actually seven, but if you actually say the word seven, there's two syllables in that, so sometimes it messes me up especially, so I always just cut that down to sev. That's why I'm saying seven, not seven, just so you know. All right, now let's play that with my left hand on my leg so you can hear how that sounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 Just like that. Get that feel going. Okay? Now let's put both of them together. This sound's gonna be playing your four, uh, your four pattern, and this sound's gonna be playing your seven pattern. Here we go. I'll start with my four. Here comes my seven. Now what you're going to realize, and you might notice, is that this pattern actually repeats in two bars, not in seven. So you're thinking, this is a seven over two. The reason why I wanted to notate it as a seven over four is mainly because I've done that with the other lessons too, and I'm going to show you how this sounds playing over top of a four four pattern with your hi-hat and snare, and you'll see what I mean where, where after seven bars it's hard to actually understand it and hard to actually hear it. It doesn't really sound too good. I'll get to that in a sec. Let's take this to the kit now, and I'm going to Again, build independence, just like I did with the other ones. I'm going to play my 4 pattern on my right hand, and my 7 pattern on the snare drum. Here we go. Okay, you with me so far? Now I'm going to show you what it sounds like playing just one note on every four pattern. So right now I'm playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to show you what that sounds like playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It sounds a lot different. Here's how that sounds. Okay, so already that doesn't sound too musical, and it's really hard to actually utilize that in your playing, at least I find. Uh, also, you'll notice that I was tapping with my foot, just keeping time, and that was because it's really hard to actually play um, such short notes and such distant notes on your right hand while playing seven on your left. 
So I was keeping time with my left foot, just bopping up and down on my hi-hat pedal. You might have noticed that. I thought I'd explain that just in case you were wondering. Okay, now let's move on. Let's try playing the seven pattern with your right hand and the four or two pattern with your left hand. Here we go. All right, now let's try it again with our right foot playing the seven pattern and the left hand, or sorry, right hand playing the four pattern or two pattern. Here we go. Okay, let's try it again. This time my right foot's gonna be playing the four pattern right hand is going to be playing the seven pattern. Here we go. Okay, last but not least, let's break it up with our feet. Hi-hats are going to be playing the four pattern. Bass drum is going to be playing the seven pattern. Here we go. Now I'm going to attempt to try my left foot playing the seven and my right foot playing the four. Here we go. Now once you've started developing this and started working on your independence with all different limbs, I mean you can even do your right hand and your left foot. I mean there's a tons of possibilities and options for you to develop your independence and to push yourself. But anyway, once you've developed that, it's time to move it to the kit and start playing in a beat. Now like I did with the other videos, I was playing a pattern on my hi-hat and snare that was a 4-4 pattern and it sounded like this. Okay, and then I would add in the bass drum and I'd create some polyrhythmic beat. Now, like I said in the beginning of this lesson, a 4-4 four, four, and a 7-4 over top of each other takes a long time to repeat and doesn't really sound too good. Let me show you what that sounds like just so you can get an idea and um, I'll crash when the actual pat repeats. Here we go. So as you can hear, that pattern is, is, is hard to actually feel the polyrhythm in there. Um, but I do challenge you to learn it. It's a great way to actually develop your chops and your independence and it's a great way to work on your mental drumming as well. However, what I wanted to do is I wanted to play a, a 7 pattern over top of a 2 pattern to make it a lot more musical. You can hear the repeat in there and it's just a really cool thing to do. So let me show you what I mean by that. So for the 2 pattern, I'm going to be playing that on the bell of my ride cymbal. And the seven pattern, I'm actually going to be playing on my bass drum and my snare, okay? So the first thing you're going to notice is that this is a pattern that is actually notated in 7-8. And you're going to be playing a 7-8 pattern with your bass and your snare drum while keeping a 4 pattern, or 2 pattern, sorry, on your bell of your ride cymbal. Here's what the seven pattern looks like on your bass drum and snare. Okay, so that's going to be my seven pattern. I'm actually playing it in between with my snare drum and my bass drum. Here's what the two pattern looks like on my ride cymbal. All right, so your two pattern is going to be counted like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and your bass drum and snare pattern are going to be counted like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 
Okay, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have your ride cymbal almost be off on the second bar. It's going to be on the upbeats rather than the downbeats, the second rotation. All right, so if you think about it, if you're playing a two pattern over top of a seven, you're basically playing every other note. So you're going to play the one, the three, the five, and the seven. Now you want to continue playing every other note, so you're going to skip the one, you're going to play the two, you're going to play the four, and you're going to play the six. Okay, then you're going to skip another note and you're going to get back to one again. That's where the two patterns align, okay? Might sound confusing. Let me show you how it sounds with a click track. I'm going to play it slow. I'm going to speed it up. It's an awesome pattern. Here we go. All right, that was pretty slow, but it gives you the main idea. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it a bit faster. I'm going to play eighth notes instead of just those quarter notes, but I'm still going to accent that two pulse. Just gives it a bit more life. Check it out. This is how to actually apply this into a musical setting. Here we go. Now that was a little bit quicker. It's a lot of fun to play. You can still hear that two pulse over top, even though I was playing eighth notes on there. Um, I was alternating with the bell of the ride cymbal, so you can still hear that. Um, but last but not least, I want to show you how to spice this up even more. And the way I'm going to do that is playing a different two pattern. Now, basically, the last pattern I was doing was just one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm going to change it. I'm going to be playing, and as you can see on the sheet, I'm going to be playing three sixteenth notes, and I'm going to open up my hi hat here. I'm going to show you what that sounds like the two count or the two pattern on my hi-hats um, with the uh, 16th notes. Here we go. Okay, now as you can see, it's still a two count. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, and what's really tricky about this one is you're actually using your left foot with the two count as well because you have to open it up. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay? So you're playing that over top of your seven, eight pattern with your stick and with your bass drum. It's pretty tricky. I'm going to show it to you once at a certain tempo. Try to pick it up. If not, like I said, go back and take your time. It's not something that you need to uh, get right away. It's a, something that's pretty tricky, but it's a lot of fun once you learn it and once you master it. Here's how it sounds. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. They were a lot of fun to play. They're a lot of fun to do. And uh, like I said, those are just two examples of how you can apply a two over a seven pattern. Um, I even showed you an example of a four over a seven pattern too. So take these to your kit, have fun with them. And um, like I said, there's also a video on how to understand the chart a bit better. And it explains a little bit on how to actually write your own polyrhythms, which is probably the next step. So enjoy that video and I'll see you around. Hey guys, it's Dave Atkinson here again from DrumLessons.com and on this video lesson I'm going to talk about 28 counts, alright? Or 28. The first line is a 4 or a 2 count. The second count, I gotta stop saying count. Alright, now for the 4 count or for the, it repeats every 4 bars or every 4 counts, 4 bars. <laughs> On the two count, that's what, seven bars of four, four? Seven times four is 28, isn't it? Seven times four is 20. So for this four pattern, I'm gonna play it on my right hand, on my foot, and, on my foot. Now what you're gonna notice and realize is this pattern actually repeats in two bars, not, not, uh, Now once you've started developing that independence with your left foot, your right hand, and all over the place, no, I don't know. Ace drum and my snare. So the first thing you're going to realize is this is a, um, shoot, where did I stop? That was a really good explanation. 